Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Attorney E Immigration Lawyer. Look at my background. Today's episode, NASA Colorado Springs Tayo, Pikes Peak with my husband Randy Bordeaux. <laughs> Malamig, but it's so beautiful here. Look. 14,000 feet higher. Wow. <laughs> Hello everybody. Today's topic, petition to remove conditions in residence. I'm doing my recording right now in Colorado in the beautiful state of Colorado. Napakaganda. Disclaimer, Pumunetayo, this presentation is for educational purpose only. This is not meant to replace a consultation with a qualified immigration lawyer. No attorney-client relationship is formed by watching this presentation. Medyo uh, mataas dito sa Colorado, so very high altitude. Kaya pagpasensyahan nyo na kung medyo humihingal ako. <laughs> I know this that for the past days. Okay. Topic natin, petition term of conditions and residence. First, explain natin, ano ba ang conditional residence? For purposes of our presentation, ito yung para sa mga nag-asawa ng U.S. citizen or permanent resident. At nakakuha sila ng residence within two years of their marriage. So ang conditional permanent, re conditional permanent resident status is valid only for two years. Okay. Ito yung mga nakatanggap ng conditional permanent resident status through marriage to a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident or na-admit as a fiancé of a U.S. citizen and then pinakasalan ang kanilang U.S. citizen petitioner. What is a conditional residence? Temporary siya, so valid for two years, my expiration. Given when married for less than two years at the time of application, nag expire unless removed by filing a petition to remove conditions on residence. So, since temporary siya, you need to perform another action to remove that condition. So, conditional lang ang iyong residence. Ang condition mo is you remain married with your, you, with your petitioner spouse. Ang conditional resident, tawag natin ay CR, can work travel, live temporarily in the U.S. So, pwedeng magtrabaho, pwede nang mag-travel in and out of the United States, and of course, to live here temporarily. Unless matanggal ang conditions, ay uh, hindi magiging effective yung permanent residence mo. Kung ang petition ay hindi na, if, if petition is not, or if condition is not removed, I'm sorry, if condition is not removed, it may lead to removal or deportation. Okay? Kaya dapat mag-file ng Form I-751 uh, to remove the conditions and residence. Generally filed with spouse or step-parent. So jointly, kasama mo yung spouse petitioner mo or yung step-parent mo. When do you file this? You file this within 90 days of the expiration of your conditional residence. So ito ay clarification lang. File this within 90 days of the expiration of your conditional resident card. So, tignan mo yung card mo, tignan mo yung expiration date, and then uh, within 90 days of that, before the expiration, ay dapat mong i-file ang Form I-751 with your spouse kung magkasama pa kayo. Paano kung hindi na kayo magkasama? Say, namatay ang spouse petitioner, o kaya nagkaroon ng annulment, or nagkaroon ng abuses. We're going to talk about that later. Kung hindi ka makapag-file ng Form I-751, your status may be terminated and you may be issued a notice to appear. Ano ba ang notice to appear? Ano ang significance ng NTA? Kapag nakatanggap ka ng NTA, ang ibig sabihin na to ay you're uh, being placed in the removal process. So, dinideport ka ng gobyerno. Ayaw natin yan. Para naman dun sa mga anak, uh, na nakatanggap ng conditional permanent resident card or status, uh, you may be eligible to be included in your parents' Form I-751 kung natanggap mong status mo on the same day or within 90 days after your parent received conditional status. So, may mga cases kasi na hindi sila sabay na na-file. 
um, and uh, and I handled uh, cases like that. In which case, kailangan ng bata ay magfile uh, ng sarili niyang form I-751 with your step parent. May mga cases then na uh, hindi to applicable. We're gonna talk about the exceptions, okay? So general rule, kailangan mo isama ang iyong spouse, ang iyong petitioner spouse sa pag-file ng petition. Paano naman yung mga cases na hindi mo siya makasama? Katulad ng number one, the spouse or step-parent subsequently died. Namatay yung spouse petitioner. Number two, nagkaroon ng divorce or annulment. Number three, Either yung foreign spouse o kaya yung anak niya ay nasubject sa abuses or extreme, extreme cruelty, I'm sorry, extreme cruelty by your spouse. Medyo kinakapos ako ng hininga. <laughs> to yung va mga VAWA cases. Number four, para naman doon sa bata, kung nasubject yung bata sa extreme cruelty, either nung sarili niyang parent o kaya yung asawa ng kanyang parent. Or, termination ng status mo, and the removal from the U.S. ay magre-resulta ng extreme hardship. So, ito ang mga exceptions, okay? So, pwede ka pa rin mag-file alone dito sa mga situations na to. Pero mapapansin nyo, dito sa unang apat, actually, all of this, you have to show that marriage was entered in good faith. Okay? Itong tungkol sa bata, uh, we can talk about that later kasi merong ibang uh, sitwasyon naman dyan. Okay? But um, out of all of this, itong sa bata ay, uh, we're gonna talk about that later. Pero like number one, kung namatay, nagkaroon ng divorce, and abuses na, na naranasan ng foreign spouse, you have to show that your marriage was entered into good faith, in good faith. Meaning, hindi lang... Uh, para magkaroon ng immigration status, kundi talagang pag-aasawa ang intensyon nyo at ang ginawa nyo talaga ay talagang namuhay kayo bilang mag-asawa. So you have to show evidence that you lived together, you got married, and your intention was not only for the purpose of evading immigration law. Ang gustong uh, maiwasan ng immigration dito ay yung mga nag-aasawa para lang makuha ang kanilang mga green card. Okay? Paano i-file? Mag-file ng form I-751. Check USCIS.gov. Uh, Andon ang instructions information if you want to do it yourself. I don't suggest it. Uh, na, na, uh, well, andon ang instructions and of course you can do it ng kayo lamang without assistance of, lawyer, of counsel. Pero dun sa mga exceptions, yung mga complicated cases, I strongly recommend na uh, humingi kayo ng assistance sa isang experienced immigration lawyer. Ang filing fee as of this time is 595 Mayroong biometric fee na $85. And then make sure you mail it to the right address. So nandun naman sa USCIS.gov ang instruction. Okay? Alright, so that's our presentation for today. Sana ay uh, may natutunan kayo at nakatulong sa inyo. Kung hindi pa kayo nag-like and subscribe, please do our YouTube channel, Attorney E Immigration Lawyer. Please share to your friends. I give free online, uh, either Zoom or phone consultation. Uh, Mag-email lamang po sa eboardlaw at gmail.com or text 713-315-7793 and uh, you will be scheduled for a consultation. Uh, maraming salamat po and... Um, and until next time, thank you.